everyone, how are you? This is the Three Angels Messengers Ministry. Um, Hello, we can on here with you. Now we are with Ocho yesterday, sharing the gospel through medical missionary and of course the Three Angels Messengers Ministry. Look, you're in my parish, you're in my town. So we welcome you to come on down. We welcome you to join in, in sharing the good news of salvation wherever you are. If you can make it here, um, awesome. If not, we're glad that you're listening in and you're inspired to go forth and share the message that Jesus will return. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for taking on the work that God has given us to share the good news of salvation of this second coming. Do have a wonderful rest of week. And again, we are the Three Angels Messengers Ministry here to bring the gospel to the world. For 15 minutes to 20 minutes till you can reach to the hour so that you can stay fit and healthy. What did God put Adam and Eve in the garden to do? He commanded them to keep the garden clean. He, Genesis 2 verse 15. He put them in the garden to, to take care of it. And so they had to move, they had to exercise and take care of that garden. And so we are to ensure that we exercise and keep our bodies healthy. And remember, motion sweetens your emotion. So when you exercise, the happy hormone is released inside of the body. And what happens? If the cortisol, which is stress hormone, decreases the immune system function, what do you think? It will make
with olive oil and you take a, thick, a tablespoon like every six hours and that will also reinvigorate the kidney right? it is extremely good at that also charcoal right? mixed with water and um, flaxseed can be placed on an area where you are having pain right? or you have uh, an inflammation in the area and you mix it into a big paste, you put it on the area and strap it on and then strap a piece of plastic over it. You wear it or you go to sleep and by the following morning you can say you are greatly relieved because charcoal is extremely good at reducing inflammation or uh, eliminating toxin from the body. Uh, I have a system, I have a system law. Same fire pole that you use, that you clean it up, right? And um, and and we use that, all right? Um, I had a sister-in-law who had a, a growth on her eyes, and um, she was told by the doctor to use charcoal to make a poultice and put on it. And I told her to add the flaxseed for three, four months, no sign of anything. Approaching the fifth month. When she took out the poultice, she did it every night. It was a blubber of stuff that it pulled out of her eyes and it's as if she had brand new eyes again. So charcoal, extremely good at not only neutralizing poisons, um, stopping diarrhea, vomiting, um, clear, helping to clear up the kidneys, right? and uh, all, all sorts of other things, but also to pull toxins and inflammation out of the body. It's a black, it's black. It's the same charcoal that you use and, and, and cook with, you knead it up and sift it and keep it into a jar and you take a tablespoon of that, mix it in some water or you make a paste out of it, extremely good. Yeah, now let's, let's talk about the cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper extremely helpful in stopping a heart attack or a stroke. You can do that in about um, it can do that in seconds. Better than that is still magnesium, but in the time of trouble when we won't be able to buy ourselves, you won't be getting magnesium to buy. So you can use the magnesium and it will be good to use it now, but, but be prepared to know how to use your charcoal because in most cases you can be in a situation where you don't have magnesium. So what you do, you get some of the charcoal, preferably the one with uh, over 90% heat unit. Uh, cayenne pepper is, is measured in heat unit and one of your cayenne pepper, one of the species, is your bird pepper. Now let me pause a little, right? All hot pepper will burn up men prostate, right? Can Black pepper is one of the most dangerous pepper you can use. So all those who are saying that turmeric is not supposed to be used without black pepper, right? That's a big blunder that's dangerous. Do not absorb black pepper in the body. It burns out the nerves in many of them, um, um, little boy, right? It inflames the mucus lining of the digestive system. It inflames the nerves and it also can lead to uterine, ovarian, cervical and breast cancer. Right? So do not use dark pepper, scotch bonnet pepper, or these peppers. If you're going to use scotch bonnet, don't allow it to burst, right? In the, to, to be exposed with the food that you're cooking. Just put it in, let it get some of the flavor, but none of the heat from it. Right? So back to cayenne. Cayenne pepper is extremely good at, at improving circulation. Right? So what you do, if you suspect that you're a person or you're having a heart attack, you take some cayenne pepper, even one you buy at the store is better than nothing, but you get a cayenne pepper, although with at least 90,000 heat that you get at the health food store. And so, all the same bird pepper there, it is, it is one of the top of the line cayenne pepper. So, if the cayenne pepper is in powdered form, what you do, you put a little under the tongue and you you um, swallow it from there, let it just melt away, right, dissolve. And it will go, what it will do is open your blood vessels so that more blood can flow. And once more blood can flow, 
to the heart, then what's going to happen, or to the brain, that heart attack or that stroke will go away. Now, also, it improves circulation extremely well. And, and so, just having some on your food, right, whenever you eat things that can accommodate Kayan, is, is very helpful. Also, it stops bleeding. So whether it's internal hemorrhaging or bleeding, or for example, you get a cut on your finger or wherever on your body, as long as blood is not oozing out, um, that you have to rush to the hospital to get it done. You just, because your blood is oozing out that much, the pressure that is coming out from the blood will not allow the cayenne to stay on the affected area. So if it's just a little blood coming out, you just put some cayenne on it, strap it on, and in less than no time, the cayenne will right, help that area, right, the tissues in that area to start. In other words, it helps to bring vitamin K to the area, and vitamin K is what is responsible for clotting so that you don't bleed to death. And so, um, cayenne, good for arthritis, good for high blood pressure, good for diabetes, good for so many different things, the cayenne pepper. Now, let me talk about the onion. Onion is also another good one. As earlier said, right, if you're having the flu, one of the good things to do is to um, cut onions and put it in the room. It helps to kill the flu block, but you can do that with garlic too. Garlic extremely good. And if you have a humidifier, humidifier right, you can put onion in the water, and that humidifier will um, circulate the water in vapor form throughout the room that you are in or throughout your house if you put it all throughout the house. And that is very helpful in combating flu, cold, and or the um, acute ailment. However, one way you can use the onion to combat um, a chest cold is to steam an onion for about five minutes in as little water as possible. And then you cool that onion. And if it's a grown adult, you're going to use a big towel, spread it on the bed. If it's a child, you use a smaller towel. Then on top of that towel, you spread a piece of um, plastic like food wrap about the same size and length, or at least the same length. Then you put half of the cooled onion, do not use the onion hot, maybe warm or cool, but not hot because it can burn the, the skin area. You put half of it in the center of the plastic, because the plastic is on top of the towel and you take off the person's top clothes. And what you do is allow them to rest their up, the upper center of their back on the onion, and then you put the other half in their chest canal, and you wrap them with the plastic first, not too tight so it restricts their ability to breathe. Not too loose so when they sit up or stand up, then it falls through. So you do it just right. Then you wrap them with the towel and use two safety pin and pin it. All right. And then you can have them put back on their clothes. If it's night, they go to bed. If it's day, they can move around and get done whatever they need to if they are not in bed. And within 24 hours generally, what that does, it breaks up the mucus because the onion has medicinal properties to break up mucus. And, uh, and so that it will break it up. I have recommended it, done it, for so many people over my 30 years of practicing naturopathic medicine, and it never failed to work. All right. Um, onion also use right with lemon and and, um, and honey yeah. all right um, and you can put some garlic in there extremely good for cold especially cold at the um, at the throat or on the chest even head cold it is good for uh, onion also good for high blood pressure and onion kills so many different germs that are classified as fungus bacteria and also viruses so one of the best, very best thing to strengthen the immune system 
is when you are eating your salad, your food, is to cut up onion in it. And your better onion of the two onion is your red or otherwise called purple onion. But all onions are good, but the brighter the color onion is the more um, beta carotene, right? It has and more antioxidants. But on a whole, all onions are good and they are both nutritional and medicinal properties. Uh, garlic. Garlic is called Russian penicillin because in the, in the uh, days of the Cold War, or uh, between the Soviet Union and the West, led by the United States. Uh, this, the Soviet authority did not rely a lot on the drug company drugs. So, garlic became very popular in, in the Soviet Union and is still popular in Russia and Poland and many of these countries because unlike us here in the West, who rely on drugs for this, drugs for that, they rely on garlic for killing so many different viruses, bacteria, and uh, funguses. The devil is in the business of destroying human beings. And he knows that this, if he were to give us guns, most of us would not take that gun. Right? To kill people. If he were to give us drugs, most of us would not take those drugs like marijuana, crack, cocaine, to kill people. But the devil knows that there's something called food, which, is, which, are, which in some cases is nothing less than weapons of mass destruction, WMD. Right? Um, in 2003, 2004, George Bush, President of the United States, sent some American soldiers and experts down to Iraq to find WMDs. He didn't have to go that far. All he has to do is send them to the Jamaican supermarket, the American supermarket or whatever, because most of the things you have in the supermarket are not food, they are processed poisons. And let me tell you what they did with some rats. They got two groups of rats, and they placed the rats in cages. One group they fed whole wheat bread, brown rice, whole wheat flour, or some cornmeal and other wholesome grains. That's not what we eat today. The other set of rats they fed white bread, white rice, white rice, donuts, white flour, right, bullet cake, and you name it—the things that we eat and give our children. And they placed water and alcohol in the cages of these rats. Now, as the weeks and months went by, they noticed the behavior of the rats, and after several months, this is what, this is the report that they brought back. The rats that ate the white, the, sorry, the all wheat bread rice, the, the corn, the awesome cornmeal, and, and these other grain foods, Yes, vegetarian rats. They maintain their well-balanced social order. No fighting against them. These are not like Kingston, Spanish town, certain parts of Ochi, right? New York, Chicago, or Miami rats that love to fight. And I've lived in many of these places, and I can tell you, some of us behave like those, like some of the rats. Right? Now, rats are very P7P peace um, animals. I remember being born and raised in Watermount St. Catherine and we had a house that we lived in and sometimes it sounded like a hundred rats in the roof, in the ceiling and you didn't hear any fighting. Rats are very sociable. So those rats that ate the all wheat bread and the wholesome food maintain that sociability, no fighting. However, the rats that ate the white bread, white rice, donuts, things that we eat and give our children, their social order broke down. In other words, right, they, Mama rat and Papa rat were like, pay rent. In other words, they, they pay the bills and pay the rent. P-A-Y, one word, R-A-N-T. That's what most of us parents have been, have been reduced to because of the foods that we give our children and don't realize that it is having 
mental, physical, social, spiritual, and financial effects on us and our children. So, social order broke down where the uh, parents in society today, where parents primarily parent while children rule the roost. Well, that's exactly what happened with the rats. Although mama rat and papa rat were not paying, paying any rent because rats grew up pay rent, but their behavior was, was reduced to their being like the children. Next thing, the rats fought a lot and beat up each other a lot. Oh yes, don't we notice a lot of violence in society over the decades as we shift from the yam banana, dashing, cassava, brown rice and these things, we give the police more work. And the police don't want more work, especially from a disorderly um, public. And some of the police too are suffering from these things, so they don't know how to, some of them don't know how to talk to the public, some of the public don't know how to talk to the police because they are eating the white rice, white bread, white flour, the sugary stuff, so that's why we have chaos in society. And that's why we as Adventists can say to the police, to the Minister of Justice, the Minister of Security, that if you get Jamaicans, wherever people are, to eat better, to adopt these simple practices, is less crime and violence in society. But how would we doctors make the money when you have less sickness? How would lawyers make the money when you have less crime? How would judges make money when you have less less crime? How would police get more job when you have when you have less crime? Right? So I'm going and, and how would we right be able to sell drugs? Let me say what? Many of us sell drugs. What they found out also is that the rats that the white bread, white rice, white flour, like donuts and these things, instead of drinking the water. They drank what? Alcohol most of the time. Why they drank alcohol? It's because they, the food were robbed of their B vitamins, so it put the rat's nerves on fire, right? And so they create stimulant. What was the stimulant? Alcohol. Same thing happening in society. As we feed our children, as we feed ourselves these things, then what is what increases? Mental issue, depression, crime, violence. Increase use of drugs, increase use of guns, right to cause violence. So, brethren, they've done it in, in prisons also, run right? the same experiment, and, and they find the same thing. We find the same thing happening in the United States that brought about the sexual revolution, right, in the 60s when they changed the food in the 40s, right? The, and by the time the 60s came, we had three revolutions in the United States which had only gotten worse, right? You see, those which is better. Yes, that those grown up that was the sexual revolution, right? The drug revolution, and also a rebellion against parental and governmental authorities have taken place, right? Because they, a change was done in the food just when World War um, One broke out and America was drawn, drawn into the war as a result of the Japanese bombing for Pearl Harbor, right? Yes, yes, later, all right? So, so yes, and, and in, in schools where they, they also throw out the junk, mach, junk food machine, the pop machine, what they notice is that test score increased while the behavior problem went down. So what am I saying, folks? The devil is having a field day as I close on this. Don't give the devil a field day in your life, right? As you leave today, Make a decision to exercise, to go to bed by 9 o'clock, to drink your water, to eat healthy, right? to get sunlight, to eat properly and do not eat between meals. Right? See, and to trust, above all, to trust God, because as you and I know, He's the one who designed our body, He created it, He redeemed it, and now He has pledged always to sustain. Imagine that someone would actually speak against alcohol drinking or the use of alcohol. So the first question I would like to throw out is what is alcohol? What is alcohol? Alright, Elder. So simply put, is a drug. Now many people will probably want to argue with it. Alcohol is a drug and like any other drug, it has the ability to be toxic and also addictive. All right, so alcohol is a drug and it has the ability 
to be toxic and addictive. Addictive. No, so, that, that, that's a simple definition. If you want to go more official, yes. let me give you an official definition from the World Health Organization, which is not far from what I just explained. All right. So it says it's a psychoactive and toxic substance with dependence producing properties. So what that is basically saying is that once you take alcohol, it has the ability to uh, cause you to be dependent upon it. So you can't do without it. No wonder why the rum bars sell so well. Definitely. Okay, you can't. You can't get. It is hard for you to be unhooked once you are hooked by the alcohol. So hold on, hold on. I know you're only talking about the drink. I will not bring them to deep. But what about Christmas time when you put a little, just a little toots in a cake mix when you're making the cake? Does that qualify? Mm? Alcohol in any form is a drug, is addictive, and is dangerous. Thank you very much. Because a lot of us, I tell you, I used to eat this thing called white slice. Right. I used to, back in the days. And I wonder what about this thing that I really like. Because the flavor of it wasn't really all that. But then I checked the, the label of it, and I noticed it says alcohol. So I realized that yeah, that's the trouble. It has alcohol in it. Alcohol is in it. All right. And of course, this is what always happens when God's people is having a good time. There must be distraction. But keep focus. We are talking about alcohol. All right. Explain how alcohol is made. How is alcohol made? All right. So. The alcohol in drinks is called ethanol and it is made when yeast or bacteria is ferments the sugars in grains, fruits and vegetables. So fermentation means that they make it, let it sit for a very long period of time, which is basically the fruit rotting or breaking down. And sometimes carbon dioxide is also added, which causes it to bubble. So you might find that happen in things like champagne. Oh. So well, uh, you said something when it just started telling me, you said they leave it to bubble? No, they, they sometimes um, add carbon dioxide. So the carbon, carbon dioxide, dioxide right, is not what? what we breathe out as poison. Poison. So you put poison in something with fruit to ferment so we can have it to drink? Definitely, that's what, what is happening in our world. And for example, when you look at wine, so wine is made from sugar in, in grapes, and we can also get vodka from potatoes. Okay, okay, awesome. All right, so you mentioned earlier that alcohol is a drug. Explain this some more for us. All right, so as I mentioned, um, WHO, which is the World Health Organization, calls it the psycho a psychoactive substance. And what this does is also, what they actually do is to put it in the same category as many of the illegal drugs that um, people consume. Right. <laughs> I was also shocked when I found that out. The WHO, which is the World Health Organization, put alcohol in the same category as illegal drugs. Same broadcast, with, um, including many illegal, illegal drugs, right? Interesting, interesting. So can you give us an idea of how much alcohol is present in some of these beverages? Definitely, I will get to that. But first I want to point out something very interesting. Yes. Now, in, in, in many countries, alcohol is not legally classified as a drug. But if you realize they have laws put into place to restrict its consumption, um, for example, in Jamaica, you have to be over a certain age in order to purchase alcohol. And they do that because of the risk to safety and health um, that it can cause to one's um, body as well. Yes. Right. And as I mentioned, since alcohol is a drug, it affects the way your body works. and mention also that it is very toxic and addictive so once you take even at the very first sip it can be the start of something very bad happening to you by becoming very addictive and drinking small amounts of alcohol you know it can make you feel happy yes. and it can also make you feel relaxed right but it is actually um, a depressant which means that it slows down the message 
between your brain and your body. So, well, something may be happening, but your reaction to it is very slow if you have alcohol in your system. It also affects the way you feel and, and how you behave. All right, but do have a wonderful rest of the evening. All right, my friends, we have the chef here doing some lovely preparation. I see some samples here, and he's going to talk to us about this lovely um, sample that he has done for you to try, for you to try out. Yes, they are here for you to try out, but we'll talk about it, and you can come across and get a sample. Let us talk about it first. So I'm going to sit right here, so my brother, right here, and we're going to talk about this. now. Chef George, Chef George, how are you now? Bless the man. Bless him, bless him. Now, my friends, as now, what we are hearing this evening, um, veganism is a thing of recent years. I want you to give us a rundown as to what it is that you prepared for those here in Ultras to sample as natural things from from um, from the earth, I would say, and from plant, from plant. All right, brother George, tell us. I am seeing all Thank sorts you. of lovely display here. Thank you, Elder Buckingham, for the introduction. Um, the more healthy you are, the more effective you can be. Ex Amen. And as we are in our chairs, we give thanks for this privilege that we have received to spread the. To for our message, absolutely. You know, this is a privilege. So, we have here a matter of fact, you taste some already in the lunch, yes, I did, right? But whosoever wants another taste, yes, sample the pearl, they can get it, they can get it, yes. So, if you don't eat already, you can have one of this big one. I'm going to tell you something. A lady asked me yes, when sir. she come for lunch if we don't have any raw one that she can carry home to prepare. She, she continue to tell us about yes. it. Yes. Yes, they have to check us when she when she finishes. All right. Um. Yes, Ella. So we have an our menu today. Yes. We have um. We have some vegetarian nuggets. Vegetarian nuggets. Have, yes, and we have some gluten. Gluten. Yes. All right. We have tofu. Tofu. Right. So and veggie nuggets, yeah. gluten, tofu. Yes. All right. And we have today for the lunch with these. Yes. Remember we serve the, the um, chickpea. Yes. Yes, and I remember yes. that. Right. So we have here you now in the sample, they say the gluten that we make from flour. Right. And we um, wash, rinse. Yes. And we wash it. All the starch out of it. Yes. And we get that gluten. We get that gluten. Gluten. stretching. Gluten. Yes. Yes. And we take um, the natural season. Um, scallion, garlic, onion, and ginger. And we blend them up in the blender and we do a meal it with it. Yes. And then we take it and make um, some some dough, some roll. And we cook them. Yes. We cook them in um, some seasoned water. Yes. So they become firm okay and you okay. take them out and they will like um like a piece of um chicken breast all right so let me go back first and foremost you get the flour yes Ella. you need the flour yes and then you wash the flour which is removing the starch from the flour right till you get that stretchy gluten texture right then you season that yes and prepare that in a manner that is quality and nice. Yes, definitely. Like so that you. so 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 right now we don't hear nothing about any form of meat, any no, form no, of no flesh food. No flesh. No. Alright. So that's the that's the that's the gluten. Yes. Alright. And and for the nugget now, as yes. we regular door nugget, but for the visitors who are, who are here and who are passing by. You know, we have our chickpea and our lentil and our oats and we cook them, we cook the lentil, we cook the oats and we crush them. We use the oats and we use our natural season. Yes. And we use our spell flour and we make a dough and we take our, our um, 
coconut oil and we fry them up. Nice. And then we make a sauce. So variety of sauce. Variety of sauce. So we use Naturally, to make sauce, you know, you, you need a little sweetener. Yes. We don't use the brown sugar, we use cane juice. Cane juice. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Nice, lovely. We use the cane juice, we don't use uh, the brown sugar. All right. That, yes. You know empty something? Empty calorie, empty calorie the brown sugar. So we use this. Because the brown sugar, as um, we have learned in our research, is that I pray to say it in a way and then break it down. Yes, sir. When it goes in the body, it leaves more decorated than it went in. Definitely. Because when you go to the supermarket and read the nutrients on the list of the sugar, there is none. There is no uh -huh. nutrients on the label. It's just sweetly. Empty. It's, but now, the cane juice, yes. the cane juice has all the properties the in it. The minerals yes. and everything. Yes. And that is what you use to give it the sweet Definitely. And this without refrigeration, it is to spoil. Yes, yes. But if you don't want it to spoil, yes. it's something like this. All right. So you boil it down to this and you get cane syrup. What? It can last it for a year. Well, uh, let me hold up this cane one. Syrup. This can last it for all up? For one year. So this is cane syrup, Ocherius, cane syrup. You boil the cane juice and you end up with your cane syrup. Right? Alright. And it lasts longer than only and it, and it is more tasteable. Sweeten um the, the tea and the porridge. Yes. When you have to use three spoon uh three tablespoons, yes? Yes of um honey. They use one of this for a, a, a cup, a nice cup of tea. A nice cup of tea. Spoon, yeah. All right, so let me ask you this. You just talk about the nuggets. Is this the nugget? Yes, sir. Come yeah, on, hold it up yes, there. Sir. Them so this is what you make with your chick chili or your lentil, yes and your oats in the oats and your natural season right mix them up together right yes and you can use carrot in it anything you want to mix up in it and you get your nice. red flour to create uh uh bringing everything yes, together yes, along with together. the oats right and then you look about that in your coconut oil yes sir. all right and you can put your sauce and whatever you over can make any sauce you want so that is Sweet two things you talk about yes you talk about your nuggets and you talk uh, about the uh, gluten. gluten. Yes. All right. And when you have some wonderful bami that I make from scratch. What? This is a real Jamaican gummy bami. Gummy bami. So you can have a taste with it. All right, yes. no problem. Yes. But you have one more. So listen up, folks. What we're saying is you can eat healthy without touchy flesh. Flesh, right, yes. Because it's true. Even the WHO is telling us yes. that the condition of the flesh we're having today. Yes. It's terrible. Yes. And Doctor Morgan this morning, and not beating the fish man that go for hunting fish and sell it. Yes. But the fact is, right. to 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 stay healthy, the level of mercury yes. in fish now, which affects the brain, is so high. Yes. So we have to stay away from that. Right. We are not attacking anyone. We are not attacking We're anyone. Just teaching. Help the farm message. Absolutely. True godliness. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, All right. One more protein that you talk about today. You said you said something about tofu. tofu. Yes. All right. Yes, Tell yes, us so, about the tofu. So the tofu made from soya bean. So you, you know that many people make it from scratch. Yes. And many people buy it from the supermarket. Okay. But okay. If you learn to make it, you can. Best thing is to make it for yourself. For yourself. All right. If you, if you don't have the time and you can't make it, check the supermarket and you can buy it. So you say it made from soya bean. Yes. I have heard of persons who make it's it from, from chickpeas. Chickpeas. Right. And also from lentil. And, uh, yes, sir. And in particular the red lentil. Yes, sir. I tasted the red lentil. Wonderful. One. It is absolutely yes, fabulous. Man. Sweet. All right. Really nice. Yes, man. So the tofu. So these are three things that you can add to your menu to eliminate yes. some of the flesh yes, out of the out of your diet. Definitely. And then all of what you mentioned, the beans, you can use the beans also, my friends, yes, sir. to be a part of your daily menu. Yes. Um, all right, what else is in this? Because I noticed some other things I noticed. Yeah, well, Tell so us more about it. Cast veg here. Yes. Yes, so we use a cast. We have string bean and we have cabbage and right. carrot. Right. We cast in, in season. In okay. The natural okay. So we just use the coconut oil. Yes. And we just cast there. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes, ma'am. As can, soon as you finish, you, you can, can get, get a sample. Just to try it out. Yes, ma'am. All right. So lovely, my friends. Yes, sir. So my friends, here it is. This is how Seventh Day Adventists eat. 
This is how health reform persons eat. You yes. hear them talk about it on the internet. We are here to tell you how you actually can prepare it. We are also here for you to try yes. to taste what it tastes yes. like. And Ella, if yes. anybody don't ever taste skin soap, yes. they can have a sample. They can have a sample. Either the savages and in a tea, or in a tea. So I have a tea, so mint tea. So mint tea. You can get your mint tea with some of the, if you want any tea. If you feel like you want a cup of tea now, I see you can get right it. Here. Lovely, lovely. Right here. So you get it with the skin soap. And All you can right. taste the difference. From the um the honey yes to the difference of the cane to so the cane syrup yes all right brother George yes sir tell me more why why should I as a regular man change my diet I mark you yes. I am telling them to you because know, I I, I, I yes, adhere sir. to this but you as a chef why should I eat differently how does it make you feel how has it changed your life yes as I said before. The more LTR, the more effective you can be. Yes. And it is very, very important that you stay healthy for your family and to serve God more effectively. The more LTR, when you work your money, you don't have to spend so much money on pharmacy and doctor. Yes. So the more LTR, the more effective you can be to do missionary work, to be more healthy in your daily labor, you, you know, your academical, what you do. You know, the profession, what you do day by day, the more healthy. And the more healthy you are, the more clearer your mind is when you study, you discern spiritual things. So if your mind clog up, if the stomach clog up, it will rotten by your stomach and it will turn into bad blood. And when you have bad blood, you develop a bad brain. So that's why if you eat certain way, it will make you, um, so you don't, you don't know to compromise. You know, People might say, but well, we educated people, smart people, still no compromise. But if you are a Christian, if you study the word of God and follow, you know, as it said this man who were coming in the devotion in, in, in um and the bus, it said, if study the word of God, especially when you speak about health, we are speaking about now. If study and obey the word of God, work in your heart. Subduing every and all attribute. What is all and all about attribute? Things that are not right. Things it is carnal. You know? So if you are eating flesh, what God said, shouldn't eat. Many people feeling up on dead flesh, especially on the anger. God said, most of consume it. It is not good for you. You're going to produce some bad children in society if you continue to eat those agus and kill the cow and feed upon the goat flesh. Look how all it is to prepare, to get a goat and to prepare it for eating. And how easy we can get some of these natural stuff and put them together and eat them. It is so hard to kill a hog. Very hard. So we know, know that when we eat right, our body functions better. Our physical, our mental, and our spiritual. So we know that these three levels is what the appetite really change and you know that by our faith and our prophet and our god jesus christ who teach us about food he said if you obey my word you shall eat the fruit of the land you shall live and not die amen yes, amen ma. thank you very much brother george thank yes, you so much yes man all right we're definitely going to give one man we're going we're going, we're going to let you yeah, suffer yeah, yeah we'll go all right take what i'm gonna be held on Oh, Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy it and you'll figure yes, it out. Alright? So, my friends, as we tell you. Alright, it's not just that you know, but a lifestyle. Now, Dr. Morgan mentioned something this morning of not being able to see to see the little boy when you stand up and look down because of how big it's stuck. <laughs> Because of how big the belly has grown. Now I want to give I want to give a personal um, testimony. 2000, the year 2000 is when I transitioned from eating meat to eating um, vegetarian. And at that time, I now weigh 175 pounds. At that time, I was weighing. 220 pounds and to as a young man 
I couldn't look down and see little boy. As the belly was out there. What a vast difference. Two to know. Yes. And what year are we now? So 24 years later, when I'm 24 years older, I am much healthier than I was in 2000. Also, I found that when I came off crystallized sugar, I lost some weight when I stopped eating the, 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 the flesh. And then I lost further weight when I stopped using pure crystallized sugar. Can you imagine? Yes, sir. Like and a testimony. And then now, like an evidence. I learned about the cane juice. Yes. So I don't have to worry because honey sometimes is expensive. Right? Definitely. Sometimes agave is another one that yes. is expensive. More expensive. You can actually plant the cane, yes. juice it yourself, boil yes. it down, down and get, get your cane syrup. Your cane syrup. Yes. And Ella, as I was saying, it's more flavory, more than the honey, more flavory. And as I said, if you want to make a cup of tea and you have to pour the honey, you get a flavor. You get a flavor. Pour it goes small, like one big spoon, and you get your flavor. And you nice, nice, flavor. nice, nice, nice. Yes. All right, thank you very much for listening, Ochoas. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for listening. Anything else you want to share with us? I know others will be coming to get their sample now. Yes. Um, we have the samples here. You can come and try it. You can come and try it. You can come and one for yourself. We specifically pull up. You can try out the tea, as he told you, with the cane syrup. You can grab a sample of the nugget, of the bami, of the... Uh, between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. Sinful and where do we are? We ask for your forgiveness of sins. And we need the presence of your Holy Spirit to guide. We need the protection of your holy angel. Truly, we are living in a serious time. The things that are happening, you have told us that when these things start to come to pass, we shall look up for our redemption dry at night which is showing us that your second coming is imminent. May we purpose in our heart to turn away from sin, to repent and give our heart totally to thee. As we go through your word, may you enlighten us and help us not just to be heroes of the word, but may we be doers that we will not deceive ourselves. Enlighten us now through your word and the leading of thy Holy Spirit through your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Indeed, when we go to the word of God, the disciples asked Jesus a special question. They wanted to know when was Jesus would return. And Jesus answered them. Jesus did not say to them, that is not for you to know. When that time comes, you will know. But let us turn to the word of God because we are not here to give opinion. We are here to share from the word of God. And in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 24, we're going to look at that account. When the disciples was asking Jesus, how would they know that he's about to come? And let us go, Matthew chapter 24, looking from verses 1 down. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone up on, up on another that shall not be thrown down. And in verse 3, Matthew chapter 24, the word of God, And as he sat up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, tell us, when shall these things be? So the disciples were asking Jesus question, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? This is a specific question. The disciples had asked Jesus. They said to him, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? What shall be the sign of Jesus? What? Second coming. And also, his coming would bring what? The end of all things. Because the question is asked, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? 
If Jesus say you don't need to know, let us hear from the word of God. Verse 4, Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take it that no man deceive you. So one of the things to identify that Jesus is about to come is what? Deception. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 6. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that he be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not. And as we go now to verse 7, Matthew 24. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be what? Famine. And this is going right across. Jamaica is about to experience a famine such as never was. And pestilence, another name for pestilence is disease. The world has never experienced what took place in COVID-19. So we can see these things are happening right before our eyes. The pandemic did not just affect Jamaica. It was worldwide. The Bible declared that these things would take place and earthquakes in diverse places all these are the beginning of sorrows and that's why we have been told that covid was just a little drop in the bucket worse greater things are about to take place before this world shall wind up and as we go now to revelation still in matthew chapter 24 just before we move over to revelation it said in verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. So we must give the message of warning that everyone have an opportunity to make a decision for heaven or hell. And that's why we must preach the everlasting gospel. Then shall the end come. And we are given the everlasting gospel. And if you want to know where the everlasting gospel is found, let us go to the last book of the Bible, which is Revelation. Revelation. And what Jesus say about Revelation? They say that this book is a closed book, but it is not so. Listen to the word of God from Revelation chapter 1. We're just going to start at verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must what? shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw and listen when you go to the book of Revelation look what is in store for all of us when we enter this book that give us a clear revelation of the winding up of this earth history. It is said in verse 3, Blessed is he that what? Read it! And say that hears the words of this prophecy. So if you want to receive blessing, don't be afraid to go into the book of Revelation. And if you are afraid, then contact the Seventh-day Adventists who God has given great light and understanding of these words. Blessed is he that read it and says that he has a word of this prophecy and keeps those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. What time is at hand? The mark of the beast crisis. What is that? That sounds like something terrible because it has a, a connotation that says crisis. Yes, the mark of the beast crisis we would have recognized as we were given a math exam just before you would do final exam you have a math exam to see where you are to get ready for the final exam during the pandemic the pandemic we were given a math exam what were you told no mass no buying and selling the bible tell us that a time would come when we would not be able to buy and sell and during the COVID, the pandemic, they test out the buying and selling issue. You could not go into a store if you didn't have a mask. 
and it reached to a stage if you did not get your bullet, your vaccine, you could not travel. So brethren, what does the Bible say about those things? Let us look now in Revelation chapter 13. And that's why it said, those who read this book here, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not what? Ship. And that's why I'm reading from the word of God. So the beast system, the mark of the beast will be about what? Worship. So let us understand. It is no, it is not a stamp in your forehead. It is nothing that they will put in your hand. But listen to what the word of God says as it relates to the mark of the beast. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. This is Revelation chapter 13 verse 15. And we have been told from Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed is he that what read it. And it said no. Let us go back to the B-I-B-L-E. Basic instruction before leaving earth. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship. So we realize the mark of the beast system will be about worship. The image of the beast should be killed. Verse 16. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. During the pandemic, when we had our mock exam, no one was exempt. The rich, the poor were put in one basket. No mask, no business, no buying and selling, no bullet, no traveling, no vaccine, no traveling. That's why the Bible said, and he calls it all, both small and great. But that was about sickness. But as we read from the word of God, the mouth of the beast will be about worship. And as we go now to verse 17, same chapter, Revelation chapter 13. And that no man might what? Buy or sell, save he that at the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So when the mark of the beast system is being implemented, there must be something in place to prevent us from what? Buying and selling because we have been told that under the mark of the beast system we will not be able to buy and sell. We just read that from Revelation chapter 13.